Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alana Knight, and did you know that genetics, including the impact of one's environment on gene expression, can account for about 40% to 60% of a person's risk for addiction? You may have friends or family that have struggled with substance abuse and may even resent them for it. However, ask yourself what may have caused them to go down this route. Families have lost their children, parents, and relatives to overdose and have seen them day by day develop into complete strangers. It is never too late to help someone get to rehab, but most do not understand how difficult this process can really be. This topic has been heavily researched for years, and I have seen substance abuse within myself as well as friends and family. The topic needs attention from those who may have people around them and are not sure on how to get help. Why should we care for those dealing with an addiction? Why should we care for someone who has done nothing but harm themselves and those around them? Today we're going to be discussing three main points. Number one being substance abuse begins from one decision to release themselves from reality, whether that be from pain, stress, or one's environment. Number two being that substance abuse kind of develops into an excuse for the pain that they're feeling. They'll begin to dissociate from reality and may even become aggressive towards their friends and family members. Number three, substance abuse is not as easy as going to rehab. One thing can send them spiraling back, craving that kind of release, helping these people, showing them that things in life are more than a simple gateway drug. So that first topic, although genetics can put someone at risk for substance abuse, there's many other factors that can tie into a diagnosis. What do you believe causes someone to take that foreign substance for the first time? Many factors can't be determined just from looking at someone from the outside. A systematic review and meta-analysis done in a rehab found that substance abuse can be caused by the following in some cases. Number one being a relationship of anger with psychiatric communities. And number two, traumatic stress during childhood and adolescent development on the personality and temperament features. Remember a time when you felt at your lowest. How did you deal with it? Most of you may have answered with self-care, shopping, or sleeping. And you'd be right, all of these are anxiety cures. However, for some, these turned into alcohol, marijuana, and gateway drugs. Drug users are simply people just like me and you, and they're looking for an escape for a little while just to relax. But this can be deadly in some cases if it's not brought to their attention. We as humans have four basic needs, and we do everything we can to fulfill them. Those basic, those basic needs are love, recognition, survival, and freedom. The first time you drink alcohol or try new drugs, you don't automatically become an addict. You have to go through what we call a process that was found during a research area in the American Addiction Center. There's six steps that we're gonna go through. One being the initial usage, two being abuse of the substance, three being a tolerance and having to up the dosage of your substance, four dependence and not being able to function or feel normal without taking it, Number five, addiction. Number six, relapse being caused due to failure to stay sober or clean due to the mental state. These six stages can be crucial to stopping an addiction and they can help us answer the questions, when did it start? When did they start experiencing these withdrawal symptoms? And what can we do to help them break this cycle? The cycle is an excruciating point in a user's life where we have to address it. They may become aggressive or have painful withdrawal symptoms, but in the end, the choice of saving their life or letting them take their own. The evidence we've looked at so far has shown us the cause of addiction and the cycle of addiction. These factors are important to the rehabilitation process and what we can do to help them. As a sponsor or supporter, it is important to see it from their side, but also completely be honest with them. In studies done on recovery, researchers found that hope and self-efficiency are the two main supporting factors to keep users from relapsing again. Hope is an individual's potential to develop routes to desired goals and encourage oneself to use those paths. Self-efficiency being a person's perceived ability to complete certain activities or engage in certain behaviors has also proven to help those in rehab. Hope is something we can give to a person when they're feeling down about themselves, right? Help the patient set goals in each month to stay clean. It helps to remind them that family and friends are there to support them no matter what. Sponsors, therapists, and doctors can only do so much and the patient will have to rely on their own hope to help themselves. They have to wanna get help. 
to help this process along. So we've gone over the causes, effects, and resolutions for substance abuse. In the end, why should we help those we know we are struggling? We should simply help them not because we feel sympathy, but because they're in a dark place and need to be brought to reality. Those dealing with this experience depression, anger, and anxiety. They turn to these substances to bottle up all this emotion and anxiety. So when you go home today, remember what we talked about and check in on those that you love. It's very important to kind of get an understanding about where everybody's at. And around 60% of substance users will experience a relapse, but we can change that percentage by providing the correct knowledge and support. Thank you and have a good day.